I'd like to start my performance by saying, 90% of everything is crap. <laughs> It's called the Sturgeon's Law, and what that means is that the majority of anything is always bad. I have a giraffe here. I'm going to throw the giraffe behind my back. Whoever caught it is going to help me on this next thing. Sir, you caught the giraffe. I have a playing card in my hand. Freely name any card in the deck. Ten of hearts. Ten of hearts. You could have named any card in the deck, but you said the ten of hearts. 90% of everything is crap. Serves this to prove that Sturgeon was correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> sir, this is not your show. <laughs> Keep the giraffe for a moment, okay? Jesus. Crazy people. Well,、uh, the truth is, why, why is the majority of everything bad? And my answer is, I think we stop thinking too soon. I'll give you a clear example. Something that people used to do around the turn of the century. This, not this century, the other one. The idea was to take a, a piece of paper and fold it inside out, using only. Your weaker hand, in my case, the left hand, something that would look like this. By the way you reacted, I can see your lack of interest. <laughs> but that's okay. I understand why. We stop thinking too soon. But if you give it a little bit more thought, like a paperclip, a paperclip makes this. A little bit more interesting. Not only that, if instead of using my hand with the fingers, I use my hand close into a fist, that makes this even a little bit more interesting. Not only that, I will impose myself a time limit of one second. Something that would look like this. Now, no, 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 no. Sturgeon may be correct. But it doesn't have to be correct forever. Things can always change, sir. What was the card? The ten of hearts. So is this to prove that things can always change? The ten of hearts. <laughs> secrets are important, and secrets are valuable. And this is the best secret I've ever experienced. It starts with a deck of cards onto the table, an old man, and the claim: "I will not touch the deck till the end." It doesn't matter who the man was. All that mattered was that sentence ringing in my head: "I will not touch the deck till the end." Now, during all this time, he was holding a small notebook that sometimes he would open and flip through the pages and look at something. But I was not really paying attention to the book, because I was paying attention to the deck and the claim he had made before: "I will not touch the deck till the end." Now, sir, you have the giraffe. Go ahead, throw it in any direction so that you can find someone else at random. Perfect, sir. You're going to play my role in this story. The old man turned to me and he said, "You could pick a red card or a black card." And my answer was, "A black card." Indeed, it was a black card. He said it could be a club or a spade, and my answer was a spade. Indeed, it was a spade. He said it could be a high spade or a low spade, and my answer was a high spade. Indeed, it was a high spade. Since it's a high spade, it can be a nine, a ten, a jack, queen, king, or the ace. Of spades, and my answer was the king, the king of spades, indeed. <laughs> Now, sir, let's be fair. You selected a black, you selected spade, you selected the ice spade, and you selected sorry, king, 
King of Space, did you feel I influenced you in any decision? No, I just felt your energy. But you, it was a free choice, correct? Oh, absolutely. Because if not, we could start all over again. But it was really fair. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the old man turned to me and he asked me one more question, a number between one and fifty-two. And the first number I thought of was seventeen. Indeed, <laughs> it was the seventeen. The old man only said one more thing: "This is the end." And I knew exactly what that meant. I knew he was going to touch the deck. Everything that you are about to see is exactly as it looked. He took the deck out. Of the box, nothing in the box. He counted: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The tension was building. <laughs> Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And on the 17, instead of the King of Spades, something appeared in the middle of the deck that later, later I would realize was actually a secret. The old man stood up. He left. I never saw him again. But he left his notebook. That was there from the beginning. And when I picked it up. That was the best secret I've ever experienced. We are defined by the secrets we keep and by the secrets we share, and this was his way of sharing a secret with me. <laughs> Crazy shit! Now. I believe that amazing things happen all the time. I really do. And the reason why we don't see them as often, it's because we don't place ourselves in a position to search for those amazing things. But what if? What if we decided to search for those amazing things, for those small coincidences in life that are truly amazing? So you have the giraffe. Go ahead, throw it again in any direction, so we find one last person at random. Sir, I'm going to ask you: Do you have with you a United States one-dollar bill? I think so. Yes. You see, a coincidence. <laughs> Let's make sure you have it. Do you have it? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Now I want you to do exactly the same thing I'm about to do. I have a dollar bill here to explain. I want you to take the dollar bill and fold the Washington part inside like this, so we get this kind of big square. Okay? Now I want you to take the bill and fold it like this, lengthwise, so it becomes like a rectangle. And then again, when you have it, and really fold it, really crease it. And when you have it, please fold the bill again into a little square like this, and let me know when you have it. Do you have it? Perfect. Now I'm going to approach, and before we start, I want to make sure that we do this in very, very serious conditions. First of all, I want to assure that we have a marker and we have a paper clip. First of all, take the, the marker and go ahead and sign the bill. And this is the reason why. Later, I'm going to be doing a bunch of stuff on stage, and I don't want you to think. Oh, while I was distracted by hell, there someone came on stage and swapped the bill. So I want to make sure it's exactly the same bill. Now, not only that, I want you to take the paper clip and put it around the bill. So even if nobody comes on stage and switches the bill, I don't have enough time to go open the bill and close it and see what I don't want to see. Is that fair? Now you can give me the marker back, and just like that, very clearly, I want to make sure that we're going to place this in full view from the beginning. Of this experience, and to make sure that everyone is going to see it, we're going to actually have a cameraman on stage. Yes, perfect. So that you can see that your signature. Yes, perfect. Now we're going to use also the deck and a glass 
for this, and we're going to put ourselves in a position to search for an amazing coincidence. Do you mind? Can you help me with this? Go ahead and take some cards and shuffle. Go ahead, take some cards and shuffle. And do you mind? Can you take some cards and shuffle? Go ahead, take some cards and shuffle. You can take some cards and shuffle. Go ahead, take some cards. You can shuffle cards in a variety of ways. You can shuffle cards like this. You can shuffle cards in a more messed up way, something like this. You can shuffle cards in the American way. As a Portuguese, I don't feel entitled to teach you guys how to do it. But the important part is, after shuffling the cards, always remember to cut and complete the cards. Do you mind doing that for me, sir? Please cut and complete. And when you have it, place the cards up in the air. And you too cut and complete up in the air, up in the air, up in the air, up in the air. A deck of cards cut it and shuffled by one, two, three, and four, and five people. Now, very clearly, I'm going to gather the deck together. And just like that, I'm going to search for a coincidence in front of everyone. I'm going to try. I have some cards that maybe, maybe they don't mean anything. But maybe that's because we are not paying close attention. Because maybe, maybe they mean a lot. Before we start, sir, you gave me a dollar bill. Is that your signature? Yes, it is. Now, I want you to see very clearly that I'm going to open your bill and reveal a small secret that we created. And the secret of this dollar bill, it's the serial number. Madam, can you take the dollar bill? In the serial number, there is a letter. What is the first number after the letter? Seven. 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 But that's maybe just one coincidence. What is the second number? Nine. So after the seven, we have a nine. And after the nine? Two. The two. And after the two? Three. Three. And after? Three. Three, seven, seven, four, four, two, two, and Q. Q like in Queen? Uh huh. The Queen of Clubs, all the cards in order, just for you. And that's my show. Thank you very much, and have a nice night.